what, what, what does it mean to be a poet? I would define poetry as um, the ultimate expression. Uh, artists need different canvas. A uh, poet's canvas can be um, a piece of paper. It can even be a, an actual canvas if you paint sometimes, from time to time like I do. Um, it can be your Blackberry when you just have that thought and you just want to record it for a moment. Um, whatever the device is, um, I think the beauty about poetry, or just being a poet, is um, the power to create, the, the power to just, you know, you can just write it any way you want to. It doesn't have to make sense to anyone but you. You know why? Because it's your expression, it's your story, it's told your way. Now, I was contemplating whether or not I should, a I should ask you this question because I don't know to what extent you use social media, social networking tools like Facebook and Twitter, right? Do you tweet? Um, I forgot my Twitter password, but I'm working on a reopening that account. Facebook, yes. Facebook. Yes. So, uh, to what extent do you do you use Facebook to promote your poetry? Oh, I definitely use Facebook. is a big part of me promoting my poetry. Actually, is that if that's the case, then why are you and I not Facebook friends? Because how is it that I am interviewing you, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> and we're not Facebook friends. I mean, how did that happen? We where, where did we meet? Tell tell the Tell the audience where we met we and, met and why we met there. <laughs> we met at Peace and Love Cafe on uh, February 24th. And um, we met because um, there was an op uh, there was a, um, the open reception. You're uncertain of this or you're, are you no, telling I'm me? Just I'm definitely telling you. <laughs> why did we meet? Because we were meant to meet that night. We were meant our, our to? Our paths were meant to close that night. You think so? Absolutely. All right. I'd Absolutely. agree with that. Um, now... This question has to do with, you know, what you do on a regular basis, which is write poems, right? Yes. Uh, let me ask you this. Why do you write poems? What is it that, that draws you to being a poet? Everything. Life, waking up, experiences, everything. My past, my present, my future. Mm -hmm. Everything inspires me. Mm -hmm. Life inspires me. People inspire me. Just the human spirit alone inspires me. Um, if I were to, to say to you, uh, give me a few of your favorite poets, would, would it be the obvious, like Maya Angelou? Or who would it be? Um, I love poems of Byron Keith and Shelley, uh, Paolo Neruda. Maya Angelou, of course, is a favorite. Uh, my mom and I used to write a lot. Uh, Grandma Soso used to write a lot. She's one of my favorite poets. My one of my favorite storytellers. My first storyteller. And um, say those are my top three. I didn't quite catch the last one. What's the name? Maya Angelou. I said my mom was my favorite. She used to write also. And who's the person said Maya Angelou? Pablo Neruda. Pablo Neruda. I love yes. Pablo. And po uh, Byron Keats and Shelley. Oh yes. yes. He's an old timer. Yes. What do you <laughs> what I know about that, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I do not. I do not presume uh, you to know anything about uh, uh, anything other than everything, um, which is what I aspire to, to know. I aspire to know everything about everything. I don't know if you are going in that direction too, but but like to. the point is. <laughs> Let's come to the point. The point is that we met at the Peace and Love Cafe, which is near um, right Robert De Niro's. Uh, he's got a restaurant down there, and that I, I believe. Karen, is that true? Yeah, right across from Peace and Love, Robert De Niro owns that whole square block there. They just got that restaurant there, the um, grill. What's it called? The Tribeca Grill. Right, the Tribeca Grill. Very, you know, up the class, very upscale. She she, as they say. Yeah, Rob, all this stuff is she she. So, um, you read there, uh, much to my, I, I have gratitude that goes out to Karen and Andre, who brought you to the Peace and Love Cafe. Um, I noticed that one piece you had fully memorized, the first piece you did, and um, the other was partially memorized, and you used a smartphone to assist you. Yes. Now, this comes to the, to the main point. 
the main point being why you are sitting in front of me and I am recording this conversation. Uh, there, there was an intersection of art and technology that went on that evening quite intentionally. So you, you, you know, you were bringing that smartphone with you as backup, right? Yes. So that smartphone was your backup. Definitely. Team, right? Definitely. You know, you, you know, you could download the data, right? Uh, so, so give me a sense of when that happened. Can you describe that experience that you were in the middle of the reading and tell us what? Can you give us maybe a few lines right before uh, it happened. I mean, theoretically, not 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 <laughs> absolutely literally. <laughs> Definitely, um, I was in the middle of a piece that um, I don't do too often. The the first poem I definitely do often, so I have that at the back of my hand. But um, the second piece I don't do too often. So I was right in the middle of it, and I had that stub moment. So I definitely gra grabbed and reached for my BlackBerry, and um, just had it right here at hand. So I definitely do use that at backup for situations where, um, you know, as poets, when you go to different places, different open mics, whatever the venue, sometimes you're prepared to do one piece or two pieces or three pieces, or they may just want you to do um, a, 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 few, a slew of pieces. And some may be, you know, may be committed to memory, some may not. So I know myself and I know a few other poets that also carry around their Blackberry or their PD, whatever the device may be. Uh-huh. Uh, a Blackberry, you, uh, tell us about the Blackberry choice. I mean, it was that. Uh, was that what? What? What was it about a BlackBerry that you were interested in, uh, as opposed to people who choose iPhones and Droids and, you know, what have you? Just because uh, BlackBerry and I have a little history, we we go back to uh, I want to say oh seven. Uh, I'm sorry. We go back to about two thousand seven. You Black go Barry back. Oh, yes. oh, okay. We have a little. <laughs> Got you. You have a thing. Yeah, we have a brief relationship. <laughs> so <laughs> we had a little fling, and um, I just really like the devices. Um, I just like the way the the email is very accessible. Um, you know, I briefly uh, I briefly worked with an entertainment company at in 2007, so it was very convenient for us to communicate. Where did with you each work? Other. I worked uh, with uh, Talk That Ish Entertainment. It's now defunct. Well, excuse me, it was defunct at the time. Uh, I want to say within the years of its inception. But um, at the time, it was very convenient. It, it helped serve this purpose. It helped us communicate with each other at um, a lot at a lot faster rate than we would have any other way. What did you what? So what was the product? What or a service? Uh, the service was a promotion of unsigned artists. Promotion of unsigned artists. Yes, I see. Um, so, um, Karen. Yeah. Uh, would you be so kind as to hand? Uh, our poet Jay Nicole here a a book of poetry of your choice. I will. Uh, we are, ladies and gentlemen, waiting now uh, for two books. Uh, <laughs> one, I'm I'm being handed them, and this is this is Not. oh uh, John Steinbeck, East of Eden. Ah, uh, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> that would be, that would be fabulous. Um, and the other is contemporary American drama. Oh, this is more of a textbook kind of thing. Well, you know, uh, the Kane Mutiny Court Martial. I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, um, thumbing through here. Um, the Matchmaker. Um, that might be interesting. Um, and uh, Barefoot in Athens. I'm, with, I'm going to go with the Lost of Eden. John Steinbeck, would you do us the favor of choosing to. something at random um, for the mathematicians among us, um, of which I am not. How are you doing? There's no poetry in here. There's no what? No poetry in here. Oh, so yes. Any random, any, any, random, any random page. Any There's random no poetry. I know. Oh, she has. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. The reason why I'm laughing is because she <laughs> she's got no poetry in Listen, give me, no, this is no, silly. No give no me poetry. back the book. What ha needs to happen is you need to read some of your own stuff. And this is totally un unscripted, ladies and gentlemen. I did not mean for this to happen, okay? So, Jay and Nicole, would you close us out uh, with a, a, a brief, a brief uh, uh, of words of uh, spoken word?
Is I'd it, love is, to. Okay. Thank you. With gratitude. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. I'm restless. I've been beyond tired three hours ago. And I'm fucking beat. Still, I can't sleep. Despite my sleepiness, I have the energy to run a race. And I shouldn't because I just took two fat splits of exotic to the face. My arch nemesis, insomnia, that bastard won't let me sleep. So I get out my bed and look out my window down in these mean streets. This impetus has me up. So I get up. I walk around my room. I reflect on my situation and such. I feel a sense of awakening with a slight sense of trepidation. Like I can't just jump in. This requires some contemplation. Time no more am I wasting. It's of the essence. I feel like I have to make a move right now without a doubt, no question. Hindsight will lead me to a crossroads, one of life's intersections. Fate has made an indication. I've made no mistake of it. This feels right. I'm wired. Sleep is so out of the question tonight. I'm restless. I've been beyond tired three hours ago, and I'm fucking beat. Still, I can't sleep. So I throw some kicks on my feet, and I hit these mean streets. My mind is racing. My fatigued body is trying to keep up the pace with it. No destination. I've been walking around aimlessly, searching for some sort of convincing. Then I look around and I let the atmosphere and one affirmation sink in. The time is now. I've got to make this happen. I've been consumed in my thoughts for so long I can't even recall the walk to Manhattan. I pause to stare at the skyscrapers and bright city lights that surround. This is New York City. I'm from Bed-Stuy. This is my motherfucking town. My ancestors wore crowns. I'm hitting the first thing smoking. Success bound. Thank you. Well, thank you, actually, because that really um, <clears throat> very powerful, powerful um, muse you have. <laughs> thank you, Julie. Um, so I want to say um, that uh, we are grateful also not only to you this evening, but to Karen and Andre. Karen, would you be so kind as to say, hi, Karen Roth over here? Yes, hi, Karen Roth over here. <laughs> Andre, is Andre listening? Okay. Area. Uh, do you have a call coming in? Yes. Oh, well, you can answer it yeah, if you want. Yeah. Um, so, you know, electronic gadgetry, it's, uh, it's fun, isn't it? Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, you, uh, you rely on your smartphone to, uh, to, to get you places and be there and, and all that jazz. And yeah, a little yeah, too me much. Too. A, little a little too, too much. much? Yes. How so? I just think that, um, you know, it's just such a, a vast difference. I remember 10 years ago, you know, you get on the internet, you know, on your home computer, you'd print out your directions and you'd go. Now it's right at the tip of our hands. Everything, technology is right at the tip of our hands. Right, it was right. scary because if it's at this point now, I imagine where it will be five years from now. Yeah. A decade from now. Yeah. What will human beings be left to do? Yeah. What will be left for us to do, rather? Um, Karen, would you do me a favor? Um, would you go over to my briefcase and, and give me my phone? I would like to demonstrate uh, this very thing. Uh, this is totally unscripted, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Seriously, it really is. Uh, it's on the outermost compartment. It's pink. Thank you. Uh, so, thank you very much. Um, I got a new prosthesis, a new prosthetic. Um, and uh, um, I want it to be, you know, totally clear. I want to be totally clear to you what's going on here. Um, um, so uh, this is my smartphone. It's a Droid, right? You, you know, you didn't mention Droid before. I, I, I hadn't upgraded since the library to a Droid, actually. You just you uh, you upgraded? Yeah, about two weeks ago. Maybe. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? Yeah, I love this better. I can't lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So listen. So watch this. Check this out. Doop. Yeah, that's what I have. Yeah. I love it. So, 
Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. <laughs>